There are two ways of interacting with Docker, generally speaking, that being the Docker command line and Docker desktop, which you can see here. So what I thought I'd do in this video is give you a bit of a run through of, or a bit of an overview of Docker desktop. If that way, if you're not familiar with it, if you're personally familiar with it, maybe you've just installed it, you can get a bit better of an idea of what it has to offer and what is where and what the various parts do. So you can see here, I've got Docker desktop open, and this is the default view that you'll see, which is the containers. As you can see for mine, I have a Docker Compose application already running. And you can see here the three containers or services that make up that configuration. So you can see here each of their names and the container IDs. Over here, you can see the image that underpins or is driving that container. Over here, you can see its status, that it's running. You can see the ports that are bound from the container to the current host. You can see when it started and so forth and so on. What you can also do, which is nice to, I guess, avoid popping to the command line, is that you could stop each of the various containers right here from the GUI. And we could look at the details, copy the details, um, shell into them, pause, restart, and so forth. So if you're familiar with the command line, you'll know that each of these options you can do there, but it's just nice to be able to do it from a GUI from time to time. And then we can also delete those, but we're not going to, especially not with a running application that I'm working on. And what we can also do from here is, well, we'd start it if it was stopped. We can pause it temporarily and stop it if we'd like, and then delete it. Now, if we had more than one, we could do a bit of a quick search over here. So let's do a bit of a search anyway. Let's just filter down to Nginx. And you can see that it filters down on the running container. Now, this isn't all that practical, I guess, in this situation, because I only have one Compose-based application with three containers running. But let's imagine, I guess you had a whole series of them. You had a quite powerful computer and you were just trying to filter down to one specifically to make it easier for yourself. So I guess in that case, search would work really well. The next one you have is images or the next option I should say. And by default, as you can see here, it will look in the local Docker image cache or Docker image repository. Now I can scroll down here. And again, you can see the details about each image. You can see um, its name and its, ah, I was going to say tag, but tags over here. You can see the images ID. We can copy that if we'd like, if you'd like to work with that on the command line or somewhere else. We can see the status that it's created, its size. And again, we can perform various options of it directly here in the GUI and delete it. Now this, I guess, makes a bit more sense because we have how many? 17 items. So if, as I said in my book, Deploy with Docker Compose, if you were to have a whole series of images, perhaps you're working on multiple projects, working across multiple teams or for multiple clients, if you're a freelancer or working for an agency, um, if you just like to experiment with a lot of things and so forth. And so this list perhaps was really, really long uh, and you just wanted to find something quickly, see if it was there, then search makes so much more sense. So let's say, again, I wanna focus in on my app my web dev with Matt, and I want to filter down on my PHP runtime. So we do PHP. Now I have two options. First option isn't the one I want. So, ah, just the nice hyphen does that, but let's type a little bit more anyway, just for the sakes of doing so. And then you can see that it's extremely quick and responsive to filtering down on the information that you want to know. So let's clear that. And let's find something that says extension. Let's go there. And there we go. So you can see basically, it's a really quick and easy way of interacting with the local Docker image repository. Now, I will say that it's really nice and easy because at least in my personal experience, again, as I cover in the book, um, doing this on the command line does take a lot more effort. I find that it's a lot more detailed to have this level of rapid functionality. So I really do like it for that reason. Now, if you want, you can also filter down on a few more options by containers that are in use, containers that are unused, 
doesn't change much, at least in this view, because all of the ones at the top were unused, or dangling ones. So let's say I want in use, and on top of that, I want a web server. And there you go. So it's a nice, powerful, I would argue, way of rapidly and efficiently filtering the images that you have so that you know which ones are available. Now, let's back out of that. And we can also come up here and see how much space all of those images are using. That's pretty handy if you want to get a quick overview. Now, what's also kind of nice, and this only works though, if you are connected to a remote repository such as Docker Hub, and you can see down here at the bottom that I am, uh, you can see based on your account, um, you can see the remote images that you have, in this case on Docker Hub, you could also be working with another service such as DigitalOcean's Container Registry or the various other services that are available. And here you can see kind of broadly similar information. You can see the account name, the name of the image, and then the tag. You can see the operating system that that image was built for, if it's been identified with as having any vulnerabilities, when it was last pushed, and its size. Then you can pull it locally into your local Docker image cache if it doesn't already, if it isn't already there. And you can then view it in this case on Hub or in the case of other services on those services. It lets you find out the images that you have and kind of quickly filter and work with them, which while I consider myself a bit of a power command line user, I can't work with them, I think, quite so quickly as the GUI presents. Now, we'll look at one last tab for this session, and that is the volumes. So, similar to containers and images, this will show you the images that are managed by your local Docker daemon. Well, I should say, in this case, by my local Docker daemon, because the Docker client, or the context that I have set up, connects to the local Docker daemon. This could also work with, I believe, I may be speaking out of turn, with remote Docker daemons, given the architecture that is present within Docker. And you can see here the volume ID. You can see if it's in use or not, because this one is used by the database container of the running Docker Compose application. You can see when it was created and its size. And then, as with the other options, you can then filter on it. So I guess I'm just going to pick on four to six. I guess in this case, the number's not that helpful, and I guess you wouldn't really search that way, but just to show search, I thought it'd be worthwhile. Now, that's basically it for this intro session. What I'm going to do in future sessions is look at or plumb deeper into Docker Desktop, such as looking at the extensions, but I think that kind of really warrants a session or a video all of its own, and then looking at the debugging and the settings. So, I hope you've enjoyed that session. I hope you enjoyed a little bit of a rapid intro to Docker Desktop. If you did like it, please give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, I guess give it a thumbs down. It'd be great also if you subscribe to find out when new videos come out and to let me know that this kind of video is what you're after. Otherwise, I'll see you in a future video.